Yo, Sip Foxes is GMX here. In today's video, we'll be looking at religion and religious victory. I had a stream the other day where some of my chatters were talking about how, some tips and tricks that I could give them, and here's some of that dialogue. But first off, be sure to leave a like, smash that subscribe button, and let's get into the video. Speaking of religious victories, there's a couple things you really want to be going for whenever you do get religious or trying to go for religious victories. Um, in terms of technologies, I would say obviously the most important one is astrology, getting up those holy sites really quickly. Um, but then in the early game of your religious games, you want to be going probably astrology first. Um, or, or depending on the AI around you, you can go for mining and bronze working or animal husbandry and archery to defend yourself. But I really think astrology is your best bet if you're trying to go straight for a religious victory. I would say the next thing that you would really want to start working towards is getting gold as well as getting up celestial navigation to then work your way towards cartography. Um, you want to be able to get to cartography so that you can have all of your um, naval and embarked units can navigate your ocean tiles. That means your missionaries and things like that can explore the entire world. Additionally, behind that, square rigging is a good one to do as well because you can get plus one movement on all your embarked unit, uh, units. So that's probably what I'm going to be going for here next after castles. That way my missionaries and apostles can even move quicker across water. Going for wonders like the Great Bath isn't bad either. Um, that can give you passive um, faith through floodplain tiles that get flooded. It's pretty much acts like an early game dam so that you can passively get faith if you have a Pretty much if your second or third city, first, second or third city is near some uh, floodplains, you could go ahead and get the Great Bath. And then as soon as, let's see if there's a good spot where I can see it. So it's like here, if Zanzibar had the Great Bath here and any of these tiles flooded, they would get plus one faith, which would be really nice passive yields. And so that, especially if you're playing on apocalypse mode or anything like that, you can spam out that faith and get passive faith just on floodplain tiles, which is pretty neat. So that's a good thing to look out for early game if you want passive faith tiles. Um, a couple other things you can go for is some of the pantheons. Um, I went for Dance of the Aurora, which I paired well with work ethic. So all my uh, holy sites adjacent to Tundra tiles get extra, extra faith, and I spawn near the more north of the map, so I have a couple of very, very good uh, faith cities up here, so a plus six and a plus seven, and then a plus four. So very, very nice there, and then so that also gives me exactly that much uh, production as well. And with the scripture card, which is a economic policy slot, not economic, a, yeah, no, that is an economic, right? Yeah, economic policy slot, you can pop in scripture, which doubles your holy site adjacency bonuses, which also works with uh, work ethic. So instead of just the seven production that I would get from work ethic here, it actually goes to 14 production. Same thing with this one over here, it goes to 12. This one would be eight. So it's very, very nice uh, pairing those up. Um, in terms of uh, civics, what I would go for is mysticism is a good one to pick up. If you are worried about not getting your great profits on time, you can get the uh, revelation card, which gives you plus two great profit points per turn. You could also do something with preserves because preserves are really nice because the first tile yield around them, um, if they are of a charming appeal, you get faith for those, uh, passive faith, which is really cool. So for civics, what I'd go for is probably go for foreign trade first. That way you can get up an early trade route, which would be really nice. And then what I do is I would go probably for state workforce and then early empire and spam out a lot of settlers, colonize about 10 to 12 cities, and then get up a bunch of holy sites and things like that. Uh, for a for a religious game, you really don't need too much science or culture to keep up with and everything because there's not many civics or technologies you really need to secure a win. Uh, I would say culture is probably more important than technologies. So like from from the early game, mysticism is pretty good and then getting to your political philosophy is really nice. But then after that, um, the, the civics that you would want are theology so you can get your temples up and then going to things like divine right or reformed church in your second tier government. After that, uh, more of the later game uh, civics aren't really too critical for getting a faith win. 
So, but some other things I would pick up are maybe some wonders as well. So you want to have some cities that have good production. So Mont, Mont Saint Michel are really nice because you can get um, apostles have martyr ability. So that anytime the apostle dies, they go ahead and get a free relic, which is really cool. You can also get Koto Ku In, which gives you plus 20% faith in the city that is made, and as well as getting you four warrior monks, which is pretty nice. Another good wonder to get is Minangchi Temple, which gets you two gurus. Uh, your gurus are then cheaper to produce produce geez and uh religious units adjacent to gurus receive plus five combat strength in theological combat and plus one movement so this will help form your little ball of religious units that you can send across the world um, and then it must be adjacent to a holy site and you must have founded a religion you get also th plus three passive faith for having another really good one to get is mahabodhi temple this is a great one uh just because it grants you some apostles very early on um, right as you get temples, if you can build this, start building this as soon as possible. Those two apostles you could use to fully evangelize your beliefs, which is really, really strong. Uh, one thing you need to make sure you note is that it must be built on woods adjacent to your holy site, and it must already have a temple, and you must have already found a religion. And it also gives you plus four passive uh, faith. But it's a really, really strong wonder to get, especially in the early game, so that you can secure um, that evangelized uh, belief really, really early on. So I would highly encourage Mahabodhi Temple for one of your wonders you choose. Of course, you can go for the Oracle as well. The Oracle is always a strong wonder to get. The AI do prioritize it in diff more difficult settings. So if you're playing on a less difficulty setting, I would say go for it. But if you're not, I would try not to... Uh, I would steer away from actually going for this. Some other ones that would be nice uh, if you can get um, are things like the Colosseum. Those help with amenities and those amenities are going to be helpful for your cities to keep growing and everything like that. Not really necessary for a religious win but could be helpful in just maintaining your cities and growing and everything like that. Just because remember amenities do affect all yields in your city so you want to make sure to have good amenities in your cities maybe through uh, be that through wonders, be that through entertainment complexes, or through luxuries. Another good one to get is actually um, St. Basile's Cathedral. You can get 100% uh, religious tourism, but this is actually a really, really good wonder if you're in the tundra like I am. So good civs for that would be like Canada or something like that, where they have a natural tendency to spawn towards tundra tiles. Though That's a really great wonder to go ahead and get up so that you can get you can get more passive food production and culture from your tundra tiles and tundra tiles tend to be not very productive tiles this is an exception i think there's a couple force fires down here from apocalypse mode which makes these super yield tiles but normally you don't get super good yields on your tundra tiles so if you look here like every one is like one food one production or just a single food so getting that additional food production and culture helps out a ton in these tiles next talking about unit composition of our religious units uh, missionaries are very very good early on before the ai have apostles to attack them um, but missionaries very much fall flat when you get into the later game if you were going a missionary up against a another apostle it is very very likely that you're going to lose very quickly because the combat strength of a missionary is only a hundred whereas compared to a apostle which has a base religious strength of 110. 10 combat strength doesn't seem like a lot but it actually is quite a bit when it scales um, with some of their promotions and everything like that so if you have an apostle with debater those are going to be one-shotting your your missionaries left and right so i would say the best army composition for religious units is having apostles with gurus around them um, that you have kind of like here so this is good formation here where i have a couple of apostles and a supporting guru that has a couple charges um, and then what i do is back in my main capital i'd buy a couple more gurus to be sending to here to repair all of these apostles as they start attacking other units another thing that i do is don't use all your charges for your apostles so this apostle has one charge but i'm going to keep him around 
because he's a good stick of um, religious combat that I can then go attack missionaries or gurus or something with lesser combat strength that is around me. So for instance, um, this main army unit, I'm going to be sending to the east, but I might set, keep one apostle around here with full health to just m monitor Peter's lands to make sure no foreign... Um, no foreign religion units come over here and try to take over our religious um, settlements here. So I might keep him around here just to keep that, but I'm not going to use this last spread. The only event that I would use the last spread is if you had a unit that had something like um, Prolethetizer or, let's see... Prolethetizer or Translator, which are very, very good units. Let's see if I have one here. Uh, Translator, religious spread is triple strength in cities and of other civilizations. That's really strong. And then you got Prolethetizer, which eliminates 75% of the existing pr uh, pressure from other religions in the tar target city. And those are really strong ones that I would consider using my last charge on those ones. But the other, all the other promotions I would not really use. Um, I would go ahead and keep the unit on one charge and just send them around to do combat with those um, those missionaries and gurus and potentially other apostles. Um, and one thing you also want to keep looking for when you are fighting religious uh, other religious units is to make sure that you are attacking in your own religious territory if you can. So for instance, I have or ta attacking in your own, religious land or in neutral religious land so for example uh, i have this apostle right here it is in uh, enemy religious territory so i actually will have a penalty to my to my combat strength of this religious unit if i attack something else in this land but if i'm in my own land i actually get a bonus if i'm in neutral land nothing happens so you either want to be attacking in your own land in a neutral territory and preferably not in enemy religious territory there. The only exception I would say is you can attack into enemy land is if you have a unit that has debater on him and so he gets that extra 20 combat strength and he can go ahead and attack into those lands that have enemy religions in them. From there you want to go ahead and maximize your faith per turn. And what you want to be doing is you want to get into a uh, the ability to pretty much spam out a, a apostle or missionary or guru once every single turn so that towards the mid or later game you can go ahead and just start spamming them out of a couple cities and sending them across so like you can see here i have a conga line of these apostles and gurus coming over here to start converting lands over here this is my main next target i've gotten almost all my religion on my home continent so I need to just convert a couple more cities over here and then start working on this. But I already, the I've pretty much purchased one or two apostles every single turn and I'm sending them in a line and they'll just be supporting one another. And then through this, I'm going to be making sure that I uh, keep the single charge ones that aren't really important around to fight some other religious units that hang around here or try to convert these cities. And then the other ones will keep pushing through and try to capture most of these cities religious wise. So like here, I would try to capture these good cities here. Um, you also want to be looking for high population cities. What those will do is that will cement your religion in there. Um, having more followers per city helps out a ton in securing your religion. If you look um, under the, if you toggle city details on one of your own cities using this button here, you can see on the left hand side here, there's a pantheon or religious beliefs. You can actually see exactly how many citizens in each, um, in your city have, um, that religion are following that religion. So the dominant religion here is my religion of I have crabs. Um, same thing with here. I have all 11 of my population is following that. Um, here there's actually you can see there's a good mix there's uh, eight that have i have crabs there's one protestant and one Eastern orthodoxy so what that means is not everyone in my in this city follows my faith you can kind of i don't think you can do this for the rest of them you have to have good um you have to have a really good alliance with them 
to see their city details, but you can kind of see from that. Um, additionally, if you go to the religious screen, you can kind of see what pressures are on these cities um, or what pressures exist in those cities. So what this tells me is that there is some pressure from Protestant, some Eastern Orthodoxy, and some Buddhism. But if you go to my cities to my north, it's pretty much all I have crabs here. Some a little bit of Eastern Orthodoxy here, but then just I have crabs for all of those. But as you can see here, there's more of all of this as well. Um, and you can see all the pressure there. Yeah, so you can see where the pressure is coming from from each one of these cities. It looks a lot like the loyalty screen. So you can see what's pressuring our our cities and what we want and so what you want to do is the higher population cities are going to exert more pressure on surrounding areas just like how loyalty works the higher population city might uh, make a smaller population city flip if it's adjacent to it uh, same kind of thing applies here so getting this 20 population city to our religion would be extremely extremely valuable for cementing our religion on this new continent over here so I'd want to prioritize this city first and then start working to, and towards getting a rid of these other religions. So what I'm going to actually focus on is on the higher population cities first and work towards the lower population cities because those will take less conversions to make. These ones are going to be the hard ones to get. So for those big cities, what you want to go ahead and use is your uh, units that have, have proletizer to neutralize the enemy, uh, uh, the other religions or um, translator where it's triple strength in those civilizations. So that'll help out a ton for those huge cities. And those are some of the basics for getting a religious victory. You will just wanna get up a bunch of those apostles as well as gurus and um, occasionally some mix in some missionaries if you have the chance, uh, just to, if they don't, if the unit, if the civilization you are attacking with your religious units aren't, uh, don't have many apostles or anything like that, you might be able to convert them over with just missionaries, which would be pretty cool. Um, but I would say your main army composition of military of religious units should be apostles and gurus. If you like this video, you're sure gonna love this one about district mechanics. Check it out right up here. If you guys have any tips and tricks on religious victories or anything like that, leave it in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch you guys next time. Bye.